what they go do with me now I'm still a talk of the town Don't need assistance, I'm hooking them down We turn the smiles into frowns Gang hop out, then we clearing the crown I know all too well how social media comments Could be blown up to something bigger And affect real life What's going on y'all, it's Lauren K We here at Talk of the Town And who's here today? Who's here today? You tell me I don't know How you don't know? Oh, you talking about me? Duh Oh, my fault It's me <laughs> It's me, Caesar. <laughs> Caesar CEO Black Ink, what's up? I like that intro, like CEO. That. Period. Yeah, period. Okay, so let's start from the very beginning. How do we start tattooing? How did that start? Damn, we going way back then. Yeah, back back to the back Damn, back that days. That shit is a while ago. Yo, that shit feel like almost twenty years ago. How long ago was it? I don't even remember. We're not gonna do that. Don't, okay. don't do that. All right. Years ago, you know? <laughs> trying to put nigga age out there and shit. <laughs> I can't Google it? Nah, chill. I, right. I, I paid enough money for them to flip those numbers, so we good. Um, let me think. What? How old was I? I we ain't getting the age, but I think my daughter, my daughter wasn't born yet, you know? And I just wanted a way out the streets. And then there was a whole bunch of, like, it was, it was stuff leading towards that situation, me tattooing. Because mm -hmm. it's crazy, because I remember I was, I was doing my thing in Harlem. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I was going to school at the time because, you know, I heard I was having a kid. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I need to change my life around. So I started going back to school. I was drawing again and stuff like that, doing, I uh, taking a visual communication course. Okay. So, you know, I was trying, I'm trying, I was trying to be a good boy, you know what I mean? Right. Trying, to, trying to do what was right because, you know, uh, having a kid, you know, right. like, I don't want to be going to jail and shit. For, right. For what? For stupid shit. So right. I did that now. And I was still in the streets, though, while I was going to school because I had to make money. Right. Um, and this is in Harlem, you said? This is in Harlem. Okay. So the last, like, my last customer, you feel me, I ain't really know, you know what I mean? He was a tattoo artist. Okay. So it was one day I was drawing shit for people on the low and giving mm -hmm. it to them for to get tattooed. So one day he found out it was me. He was like, yo, listen, I going up there to serve him. He was like, yo... I make a deal with you. Cause mm -hmm. I know your baby moms. Yo, stop, stop all this shit you doing. I'll show you how to tattoo. You ain't gotta be in the streets. That's fire. Now I looked at him. I was like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you wasn't jacking it. Nah, cause no one really gives you like in this world. No one gives you nothing like that. You know what I mean? No one okay. sits there, especially you destroying their life and shit. You sitting and selling these motherfuckers drugs. You like, you want to help me? Right. After I'm fucking you up. Allegedly. Allegedly. So, what happened was, I took him up on his offer. Because I already had a friend named Malcolm, um, Andre Malcolm, who was already getting tattoo money. But he was too busy and shit like that. Mm -hmm. So, I ain't really pursue it with him. But with homie, I did it for like like three months. I, I stood on that and learned. And three months, I was already ready to go. And that's what I did. I, then I went to... um. To Brooklyn, opened up a shop in Bed Stuy mm -hmm. called Joaquin's Inc. That first year I was in Urban Inc. magazine, the first edition. Oh, I know that's right. And then from there I was in a couple magazines from there. And then went to Black Inc. Because mm -hmm. it wasn't miles at the time. And eventually took it over and we see where I'm at now. So when did you learn how to draw? Because you said basically it went from like oh, drawing nah, to that tattoo. shit was. That was when I was little. Like, my mom used to leave me in the crib and shit like that. So natural talent type shit. Yeah, it was like I just, you know, back then we had VCRs. Mm -hmm. Don't try to tell my age neighbors. I, I wasn't going to say, I was all still right, here I'm for just, the VCRs. All right, well, I, I was don't here know. for that. I don't know, because the way you just looked at me, VCRs sounded kind of foreign. I was here so, for that. I was popping in the Rugrat tapes. Oh, damn. All right, boom. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so... Nigga like me be pausing a lot and all that other stuff and just be drawing up. Cause my moms really want me to work for Disney. And oh. at the time, I really want to please my mother. Mm -hmm. But, man, listen, when you go to school, you drawing and shit like that, motherfucker looking at you like you a punk. So I had to keep that shit to the side for a minute. Really? Yeah. No one really knew I drew. I had a bunch of sketchbooks in the house, but I didn't go out there and show anybody. I didn't really start um, letting people know I, I really drew. Till um, trying to go to high school. I okay. went to go to a specialized high school for art. Mm. 
Which one? If you don't mind me. I, went, I, ended up, I wanted to go art and design back then. Either art and design or what was it? LaGuardia. But I ended up going to graphic arts. That's fire. Okay, so you get in the shop now. Who's your first celebrity client? Ooh. Damn. Damn. <laughs> it's a timeline. We're going back. We're going to work our way back to 2022, though. My first celebrity client. Yo, I really don't remember. I've tattooed so many celebrities. I really... I know you mentioned... I I watched the interviews before. I know you mentioned doing, like, ASAP Rocky before he blew up. Yeah. See, the the ASAP mom was just, like, they little kids at that time. You feel me? They were just running around the block. They was, like... We used to think, like, they was cool, weird kids. Like, they wasn't (laughs) on no, like... I just want to sell drugs. They was on some other shit. You right. Know what I mean? So, yeah, we did them when they was little, but for all that shit, it's like, damn, but who was the first? Because you got to understand, when I when I went to Black Ink, it uh-huh. was like, it was different. Nobody uh-huh. was coming the best that I get tattooed. No, no celebrity. They were scared. Of the side? They were scared of the side. Back then, my, t- my tattoo shop was on, on Marcus Garvey between Jefferson and Hancock. Mm. That used to be called Homicide Boulevard. Oh, wow. Yeah, that shit was dangerous. So, nah, they wasn't coming in. But when Black Ink, though, mm-hmm. it was a different feel. I remember because I used to tattoo a lot of fucking people, especially radio personalities like Angel Martinez. That's why. And Lover, all of them from back then. So when you ask questions like that, it's like, damn. Whew. I think it's really fire that... um. You said people used to be scared to come to the star to get tattooed, and mm-hmm. now you have your own shit in the star. Like I think that's yeah. I had to tough. go. I had to circle back. Yeah. Because um, even though I'm not all the way from Best Star, that's my home. I basically feel like that's what created Caesar. Okay, so where are you from, and how did we? Yeah, and how did you grow this love I'm for really Best from Star? The Bronx. Ooh. I'm really from the Bronx. But, mm. you, ooh, wow. Mm. Whoa. What was that about? Mm, the Bronx. Nah. As a, as honestly, the Bronx and Brooklyn is kind of the same thing. Mm, it's not. It mm. is, yo. <laughs> you saw the room? Whoa. Nah, yo. Because you got to understand, right? I grew up in the Bronx. My mom mm. was a Jamaican, so I grew out of Jamaican. So I, okay. I grew up there in White Plains Road. You know what I mean? In and, and Brooklyn now, best style now, my pops is American. Okay. And half of Best Star is my family. So when it, when you, when it goes back and forth, it's like, I right, I'm over here on, on my Jamaican side. But right. when I'm on my bullshit, I'm in Best Star. That's okay. why a lot of people are like, nah, he from Best Star. Because they used to see me from before. Because half of my pop's family from there. Mm-hmm. Feel me? So it's like, when you say it's not the same, it kind of is. Because both of them boroughs be on their bullshit. I'm not going to lie. I used to ride through the Bronx with my windows up because I didn't want to inhale that air. Yeah, yeah, I hear, I hear you, you know what I mean? It, it, it's a couple spots, but nah, it ain't like that no more. So why did you name the door Best Eye instead of Bronx? Because that's where I started from, Best Eye. Okay. See? I just think your love for Brooklyn is greater, so we take that point. That's what it seems. <laughs> <laughs> nah, both of, them, both of them boroughs molded me, so I can't do that. Okay, so... <laughs> Both half half okay. Half, half. So you mentioned doing Angie Martinez at Lover. So That's where fine. does VH1 come from? How long are you at Black Ink before VH1 approaches y'all? How does that go? VH1 was because of Corey Guns. Corey Guns had That's came fire. in. I was tattooing his chest mm-hmm. for his show. It's called Son of a Gun. Okay. I remember I they seen the chemistry in the shop. It's like yo, they want to film something in here. Nah, at first I was turning that shit down because I was like, man, fuck that, <laughs> man. Like, y'all tripping. Because I done seen... What didn't uh, you like about it? Because every time I watch reality TV, it's nothing, um, it's nothing positive about that shit. They be sitting right. here fucking, fighting like, making... Fighting and shit, yeah. yeah. And not even just fighting because we fought, but it just makes the... I feel like it was never positive for the male. Okay. Nothing, nothing, it always... He's 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 a womanizer. He's this. He's yeah. that. It's like the shit that we ain't trying to be on. That's what you got to be on the survivor on, on that type of on TV. Mm-hmm. So when they first came, it was like nah. Then like after the third time, my cousin pulled me to the side. I was like yo, what we gonna do? 
Well, we I do. think three times is crazy. Yeah, I really didn't realize how it was, but yeah, yeah. It was three times. Wow. So it was like, yo, come on, let's do it. So I was like, when Ted told me that shit, he was like, yo, what we gonna do? We gonna keep doing that shit? I felt like we was good. We was making money in the streets and we was tattooing. Mm-hmm. We good. Nah. He said, nah, we can't keep doing this shit forever. So I was like, fuck it. Let's do this shit because I know we don't go nowhere. Okay. Man, listen, we shot that pilot. We ain't, we ain't stopped working in 10 years. Period. Love yeah. that. So you and Duchess, were y'all together before the show? Or that really happened, like, on camera, the way... Wow, you really brought that shit back. <laughs> okay. Let's, all right, let's go. I told you we going down the timeline. Man, she that's, that's the timeline. deep down the rabbit hole. Like, <laughs> I even forgot about that part of my life. So all right, so let's, let's talk about that. Um, Duchess, was she with your relationship before? Tonight? Were y'all two, yeah. Like, did y'all really get together, like, on camera, the way it's portrayed? Or, like, y'all was together, and then they made y'all, like, reenact it? It was kind of both. All right. Me and Dutch was fucking around okay. before the camera. Okay. But while we filming, people starting to catch on that we was fucking around. Okay. And they, you know. And people as in like production or people as in like in the shop? Production. Shop, okay. The shop already knew okay. we was fucking around. You feel me? Because Duchess had came up after she see, she seen me a couple magazines. Mm-hmm. So she came up to New York looking for me. Okay. So it was like, all right, what's up? Was fucking around for a while. Production found out and they started like, how can you say it? Not pushing us together, but they'll do shit and you be like, oh. They were setting it up. Basically. And before you know it, it was like, yeah, y'all look good together. Y'all might as well do that shit. Okay. And, you know, she a smart girl. And I was like, you know, we can make some money out of this situation. So, fuck it. Let's right. try to do this power couple shit. And that's what happened. So, how much of... I'm not even going to ask you about reality TV in a whole. Let's focus on Black Ink. How much of that was produced on your end? Like, With how me? much of it was... Yeah, how much of it was I put, my whole put life. together like that? Or, you know nah, what I'm saying? My, my life is reality, so, like... You just put a camera on me and it's a go. Like, <laughs> I ain't, like, all that shit. They, that's the, the beauty of it with me. Like, you don't really have, you don't have to produce me. You just have to put the pieces together and just go. Like, that's, nah. But you you absolutely right. After a while, some of the character storylines start drying up. So right. they have to produce it. Okay. But with me, nah. It's going to be something. It sometime. is what it is. It is what it is with me. What's your song? Gemini. Mm. Okay. No, wait. Stop. It wasn't a bad. Mm. It was like a. I don't know that last. Mm. Mm. When I sound from the Bronx and that, mm. I'm a Gemini. Mm. It kind of <laughs> sounded the same to me. But hey, maybe I'm wrong. No, I got different mm's. Okay, that was a mm because I'm an Aquarius, so I'm an air sign. I identify with the air sign. Oh, you're okay. an air sign too. I don't okay. know if you know that. You're I know an air that. sign. I know that. That's why we supposed to be cool, but I don't know. We are cool. <laughs> because. I'm from the Bronx. You from Brooklyn? Look like we banging heads already. Yeah, I just the Bronx. I just can't get jiggy with. But the air <laughs> sign thing, I definitely can. Um, so two sides, I could see. So which side did you show on reality TV? Both sides, or you focused on one side? No, I said one side. Okay. Because I right, on reality TV, you gotta be able to uh, switch on and on. Yeah. You feel me? Like. The way I am in real life is not the way I'm on TV. Yeah. Like, on TV, you got a bunch of motherfuckers that be wanting to play with you and really don't work for you. Mm. So sometimes you got to set the tone like, nah, you ain't going to do this because I got right. eight more shops and these motherfuckers ain't going to start acting up. Right. You know I mean? And then it's just like, you also trying to carry a certain respect with your company because mm-hmm. you've been there so long now, you got to let motherfuckers know, like, yo, chill, don't right. do this. But in real life... I ain't arguing with nobody. If I got to fire you, I don't even fire you myself. I got a sister to do that. Mm. So it's like... Because that was a thing for you. The yeah. firing was a thing for you. Yeah. yeah. I ain't going to lie. It was. <laughs> but I feel like I passed Trump in that shit. So I was like, I don't got to fire people no more. Okay. It, it, it was between me and him. It was, it was something. You know what I mean? He fired somebody. I got fired two people. You know what I mean? Every week it was between me and him. Okay. Well, it, it's the truth. 
Uh, you know what? I like the accountability. <laughs> I, like, I like the accountability. So, what is your relationship like with the rest of the cast? Past, present? Hmm, that's interesting. I mean, how can I say it? Hmm. Damn, that's a good question. I can't sound arrogant. Okay. Why not? Because I can't sound arrogant because people are saying I'm arrogant and then I don't want that persona on me. But honestly, I'm cool with I'm cool with almost everybody if I see them. Okay. If I'm not, they stay the hell away from me. But mm-hmm. yeah, like it's all up then. Nah, not okay. with everybody. Like nah, <laughs> like you know, yeah. From watching the show, you know who I fuck with. I don't. Fuck right. With, you feel me? So that uh, part is real. Like yeah, if you I, fuck I, with them on camera, you fuck with them. Yeah. If I fuck with you on camera, I really fuck with you. If right. I don't fuck with you on camera, I really don't fuck with you. Okay. And it's just how I am because I just feel like this. Certain people have goals in life. If your goals don't kind of match up with mine, mm-hmm. what am I saying? What, what, yeah, what absolutely right. I don't need no new friends. You're absolutely right about that. So I think that that's like with any relationship in life. Friendships, relationships. Yeah, like, like I think if, the, if your best interests and their best interests don't coincide, then yeah, what we here match for? Up. If exactly. you don't play video games all day, I want to chase a couple million dollars every day. It don't match up. Right. You're right. So, being on reality TV, and like you said, you were true on there. You was giving your whole life. Do you feel like every like the perks of being a reality TV star is worth giving up, like your privacy and shit like that, twenty four seven? See, with me, it's kind of different because I was able to, um, I was able to basically franchise a business off of it. Right. If it was not, if it was not beneficial in some type of way, nah. You see, there's some people that thirsty for the fame. They're okay. thirsty for that, like, they're thirsty for people to know them when they go outside. Mm-hmm. Me, I always just wanted the money. Man, that sounded crazy. Okay. I mean, in business. Yeah. That, that's like, what you I do always, in business for. I, that's what I wanted. Like, yeah. if nobody even knew my name, I'd have been cool with that shit. As right. long as I'm driving something crazy. You know what I mean? So, when it comes down to it, it's like reality TV served its purpose for me. Now, there's a lot of motherfuckers out there I see right now who was on reality TV forever, came off, and they back to square one. Mm-hmm. That can't be me. Okay, period. So, I know the past is the past. We're going to leave the past in the past. Oh, you so we're going to talk about. Past? No, we're not. No, in this this question right here. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, so, today, where do you and your daughter stand? We trying to work shit out. I like that. She off in college and whatnot, so. Oh, love you know that. I mean? Congratulations to her. You know what I mean, she's doing her thing, what she's supposed to be doing. At the end of the day, like I, like everybody know, Tom Hill, all wounds. Right. Shit like that, we family. Dysfunctional family at that, but we still family. So, you know how that goes. One day, and y'all going to be seeing us on Instagram, right. kicking in bullshit. You know every I mean? family got their bullshit. Every family got their <laughs> bullshit, yeah. So, do you want more kids? Or, like... Damn, what, you don't. really going there? Like, you went from that to this to, like... That's actually crazy, because I feel like we haven't even really gotten into the tea yet. I feel like this is hot water. We didn't put the tea bag in. This is not hot water. You just ask me if I want more kids. Like, <laughs> the hell, that ain't hot. <laughs> um, see, the problem there is I do, but I don't. Okay. I do want more kids, but I don't want to have another baby mother situation. Mm. I'd rather be, like... Married or something before I say and be like, yeah, we having a kid. Cause so you want to get married? What? You want to get married? I said if it was happening, then that has to happen. That's a okay. big if. Okay. Marry, like, marry me. <laughs> I don't think anybody will be in there for that long haul like that. Like, that's a lot of work. That's a huh? crazy statement to say. What? You don't think nobody would marry you? No, I'm a Gemini. I don't know sometimes how I wake up my damn son. I don't know what side I'm waking up on. I'm going to let you know. Sometimes I might not say nothing, but a head nod. And one day I might be, oh, I love you, baby. Ooh, ooh. I don't know, yo. It's like, you know. But I still feel like maybe there's somebody that wakes up the same way. Maybe somebody wakes up like... As moody as you. Nah, we can't have that. See, this is why I can't be in that type of relationship. Okay, but maybe there's somebody to balance you out too. Maybe there's somebody that don't care that you're moody. Maybe, but when that happens, I'm going to let you know you invited to win. Okay, but period. I don't know, I like yo. that. Period, okay. So, on Instagram, you mm-hmm. posted, I suck at showing sympathy, and if you start crying, I'm going to stare at you. 
right? Right. And on Pete Films interview, you said that you feel like as a man, you have to like suffer in silence. Right. So why do you feel like black men don't have the room to be emotional? I mean, if you look at any, if you look at a characteristic of a man, especially a black man, mm-hmm. is mostly we're supposed to be strong, we're right. supposed to be um, responsible, we're supposed to take care of home. It's certain characteristic that as a black man we're supposed to have. Mm-hmm. Nothing never says we're supposed to be emotional. Nothing never says we're supposed to break down. Okay. There's no, there's never been a picture of a strong black man who sits there and cries in the shower. If you really think about film, anything, even okay. if we depict ourselves, we don't depict ourselves as that. We always depict ourselves as strong. Mm-hmm. So to be that is like you got to remove the emotion and be logical all the time. It's almost like you always got to take the high road. You can't sit there and just be like, fuck, and break the fuck down because that's just not how it is. And you I think feel, so? Yeah, because with me now, I feel like, even with me break, if I was to break down, mm-hmm. no one gonna give a fuck. And that's being honest. The only thing you you can do is get to the solution, cause you have a problem. I don't got time to break down, cause that's what some people want from me. That's why some people do the shit they do to see that moment. I'm not gonna give you that satisfaction. Um, hmm. Okay. But that's what I was talking about when I was posting it. Now other people. We having, like, other, like, major stress and all that other shit. The way they take care of it is the way they take care of it. I'm never going to But you feel nobody, like but you got to. I feel like I can't do that. So do you ever, like, process your emotions? Do you feel your emotions? Or do you just suppress and keep it pushing no, for I the pro- sake of? I process everybody. my emotions, but my process of emotions might be different than your process. Okay. Like, a lot of shit hit me at one time, and that's from when I was little. Right. I learned how to manage and not basically put myself in a hole. Like, mm-hmm. some people get depressed and shit. Nah, certain things, yeah, like death. He supposed to mourn, right. but you're never going to see me for a month not coming out my house. Okay. And that's just me. Now, like I said, other people, that's, that's how you cope with, with whatever you cope with. That's different than me. I'm just... I process my shit quick, because I already know, especially with death, they're not coming back. Feel me? You just got to take it how it is. Do you believe in therapy? Yeah, I believe in therapy, especially if you're making irrational decisions. Would you do it? Or yeah, yeah. I've, I've done it already. Really? Mm-hmm. I want to get into it. How was it? It was... And did you have, like, a black therapist, woman, man? <laughs> wow. I think that matters, because I feel like we're... The white people, uh-huh. they, I feel like there's a certain side of the coin that they're never going to see because they're white. Like, it doesn't matter how much they could sympathize I mean, or empathize. They'll never see the full picture because they're white. That's how I feel. Well, I had a black male doctor. Okay. Right. And um, he made me see certain things that I, I never really saw myself. Even, like, while I was on TV, mm-hmm. the, the, like, the trauma I went through and... Mm-hmm. I processed it too quick because in my head, responsibility, especially coming from a Jamaican family, mm. is the most, is number one. Right. So if you're sitting here and you have a crew that you're feeding, you don't really got time to sit down and mourn and shit like that. And he made me realize some of the times I was wrong. Some of the times, you know what I mean, I should have took time out for myself, which I never did because I was always trying to um, appease other people. Mm-hmm. And... With that, it just like it opened my eyes to certain things because once you <clears throat> think the way you think for so long, yeah, it takes somebody else like almost not my thought, but somebody else theories to go yeah. with yours and be like, maybe I was wrong on certain things, and I could see where I was wrong on certain things. Now. That's a fact. So you see in the media a lot has been going on with Yay. Mm-hmm. Um. I feel like a lot of people are going back and forth about, do we cancel him for real? Do we not? So what are your thoughts on the whole cancel culture thing as a black man? The funny shit is, right, you ever notice the whole cancel culture thing? It's only canceling us. Like, that shit, I've never seen a white person get canceled by this cancel culture. 
Like, and there's some canceling that need to be canceled. But I don't hear that shit. I agree. You know what I mean? All it is is stupid. It's like, it's like black on black crime. It's like you want to cancel this person for feeding his family because his opinion is different than yours. Like, um, I, I think it's a little different than that. I think it goes beyond opinion when someone like Ye has the impact that he does. But who gave it to him? It was us. It was cool. Okay. What, it was cool when he was saying what we thought was cool with us. Now it's he's saying something that we go against. So let's cancel him. Mm -hmm. Nah, if you're gonna take him at his good, you gotta take him at his bad too. And, so and it's crazy because I just feel like with him, mm -hmm. he had, he went through a lot. Mm -hmm. And honest to God. From his mom's dying, he never been the same, B. Right. And no one's seeing that shit. His mom's left. I feel like that's what the documentary showed. Yeah. Fuck, I, I, when his mom died, he flipped. Like, yeah, yeah everybody see him breaking down at yeah. fucking press conferences, running for, for president. Nah, homie's crying out for help, but he got too much money for anybody to sit his ass down. Mm. But he needs some help. That's, that's about it. Other than that, some of the stuff he be saying... Is not the message, it's the messenger. Okay. Feel me? Because certain shit I can't agree with. But I think everybody okay. agree with him behind closed doors about certain shit. Behind closed doors, everybody agree with him. He's just, he's just saying what he, he want to say. Certain yeah. shit, though. Now, I think certain sometimes, shit, yeah. Certain shit, like the major shit, but then sometimes I'm like, what? Right. Did, huh? Definitely all what? Right, all right, yeah. All right, that, that was a bad blunt. <laughs> so I was going to ask you, where do you draw the line? Like, where do you feel like, okay, this person made a mistake. Let's let them learn. Let's teach them and let's move on with life. Or mm -hmm. like versus, okay, this person, like, this is not a mistake. This is who they are. They're done. How do you draw the line? Like, my shit is life is always about correction. And when you make mistakes, like, even when you was young, you go to church, they teach you. You sin, you ask for forgiveness. Right. They give it to you, you feel me? So it's already taught that you're going to fuck up. Mm -hmm. it's, I don't think there's, if you really like, let's say a family member. Do you okay. kick a family member out to keep going to jail for stealing and robbing and shit like that? Um, Some people do. See what I mean? But that ain't love. Because that's still your family member. You got to accept them for who they is. I just feel like... With us, we kick this. We quick to say, we don't accept this, and we not doing Who's us? This. Black people. Yeah. Okay. Black people. We just sit there and say, yo, we not accept this, and we just kick our own selves in the ass all the time. It's like people, the media feed us anything, and we'll eat that shit sometime up, especially yeah. about our own. And I've seen that shit happen many, many a time. It's like, wow, this shit is just crazy to me. And I'm not just talking about from personal experience. Like every time you turn turn something on shade room or something that's a fact it's some bullshit about about a nigga and then everybody just eating it up it's like when does that shit even like stop and i don't see you see tmz putting out dirt but it ain't be like this shit that we see on the internet like this shit is just crazy to me i think it derives from um black people having to or feeling like they have to uphold a certain, you know, stature, yeah, and so we, we don't do allow shit. our own to make mistakes. Yeah, when we sometimes can't just we gotta do that shit on on the internet. We gotta do yeah. that shit in real life first. Yeah. We gonna do that shit. It gotta be straight across the board. It can't be on the internet just because I got a keyboard and yeah. I got free Wi Fi. I'm canceling somebody. Like that shit is stupid to me. Free Wi Fi. Free Wi Fi. Okay. <laughs> so. Um, you mentioned learning from your mistakes. So, like I said, we're not digging into the past right now. Right. So, when everything happened with Best Eye, that's his dog, y'all. Mm -hmm. um, what did that situation teach you? It taught me, honestly, even before that incident happened. When, I mean, when that incident happened, because you got to understand that the video is like almost two years old, probably older than that. Okay. I already had seeked help for, with Best Eye. Because, you know, you growing up in the hood and shit like that, you don't know the proper way of, how can you say it, um, disciplining your dog. Mm -hmm. And the correct way of training your dog. You try to sit there, sit, 
look at him. Hopefully, he said, good dog. Mm -hmm. You don't understand that shit. You feel me? So, first thing I did after that incident was get go to obedience school, teach me and him how to properly get to, get together and communicate. Right. The other dog, I got I got rid of him because... The little, oh, yeah, two. It was two. Okay. The, the, that's what set him off. It was that little dog. That little <laughs> dog, he was a problem, you know? I don't know, because I got him from Cleveland. He's supposed to have been an um, American bully. That motherfucker was a mix something. I don't even know what he was, but it was just, it, it, it just, it was a whole thing. But after the incident, you feel me? I just learned a lot. You got to watch who you have around you. You feel me? Definitely. Because that shit was just crazy how that video even got leaked. Right. You got to watch. You got to watch yourself at all times. Because you got to understand, being, being who I am, mm -hmm. you constantly on the mic, so people constantly watch you. And that one moment, I lost it, and that shit got me caught up. And it's crazy because I'm sitting there like, damn, probably one moment I just fucked up at. Yeah. And that one moment could jeopardize everything. But I learned now. Right. I think it's a great way to look at it as everything is a learning experience. You it take is something because from at the end of the day, it's like this, right? <clears throat> Some people get upset and was like, yo, glad you got kids. We're glad you got kicked off Black Ink. And then the others is like, damn, it can't be Black Ink without season. Right. So, you know what I mean? I understand people being disappointed because there's a lot of people that looked up to me and just watched the show because of my entrepreneur. Right. And my entrepreneurship. Definitely. So it's like, I understand where y'all see my fault. In, and that's why I say, and be like, you know what? I'm going to take full accountability. Because mm -hmm. when that video came out, I could have easily said, yo, that shit ain't me. That shit is wild foggy. If you look at it, that's, it could have been any black man, yo. You, go look at it again. I didn't have to really say it was me, but I took accountability because it was me. I was like, yeah, I fucked up. I had a moment. But at the end of the day, I definitely took accountability for that shit. Yeah. You know I mean? And it was a fucked up moment. Yeah. And I'm regret that shit even ever happened. But that shit had to happen for me to get in this place that I could learn what I'm learning now. Humility. That's a fact. Everything definitely happens for a reason. So... On Black Ink, I know you weren't just a cast member. You executive produced it, mm -hmm. right? So what is an executive producer, and what are the roles of an executive producer? Ooh, executive producer is a lot, man. That's one of them jobs. I don't miss, but it was easy for me because it's like everybody, I knew them. So <laughs> it sounds crazy. So I knew everybody's like dirt, what they're going through, <laughs> all that other shit. So with me, from being... With them for years, it mm -hmm. was easy. It's like, I right, tell this date and this, this girl, um, call Shorty over. We're going to have a party. Call that one in early, and then we have the other one show up. They're going to bang heads, and that's going to be a fight. So the executive so, yeah. producer just pull the strings? You just pull the strings. That's okay. it. Okay. You pull the string with the other producer and get, to get your scenes. But as wild scenes, <laughs> I just thought, put it like this, season one to eight. Mm-hmm. I was basically pulling all the strings. Okay. And then I gave it a rest nine and ten. I just wanted to, like, just be a what you call it, just a cast member. But I was still pulling strings because I still had to put my uh, my input. In. So when you were the executive producer, um, what were some things that you had to maybe sacrifice because you weren't like just a regular cast member? It was like <laughs> executive producer and boss in the shop. It was so that's a my double time. Winning. Like that was the most important thing. I had to sacrifice a lot of time okay. because we we'll have days that we filming for like twelve hours, and I still have to sit there with mm. the other producers, go over certain things mm. for the next day, and what we want to shoot just in case it came on schedule. The scene didn't go how was, we thought it was gonna go. It'd be wild shit. And then on top of that, I gotta run my tattoo business. Right. So it was a headache and work because. After a while, my tattoo business came last, and that's what we started suffering. So mm. I'm like, nah, that's my, that's not my, that's my bread and butter. After all this shit is done, yeah, that's what I have. So I had to sit back and be like, you know what, y'all is like you produce this, you know what I mean? I got to get back to my shots. I ain't got time for this. So how much input did you have on, like, what made the final cut as far as no one got the episode input airing. because <clears throat> honestly. They edit how they want to. Okay. To groove how they want the episode to groove. So even as a producer, you don't have say in that? Nah. Hmm. That's mm -hmm. interesting. 
That's TV. TV. You see, TV. All right now. So how much involvement do you have in, well, first of all, how many shops do you have in total? Ten. Ten. Okay, so how much involvement do you have in each shop? Day to day, every day. From the time that the first employee walks in to the time the shop closes. Mm. I got cameras everywhere. I got clovers everywhere. I got um, general managers for each region. Okay. So how does you no longer working for VH1 impact the involvement of your shops? Because I would imagine you're not giving them nothing for free, but you still need to be in the shops. I mean, truthfully, when the news first hit, it was kind of like, kind of slowed up a little something. Mm -hmm. But, um, <clears throat> nah. Because there's always been a difference between the Black Ink crew and the Black Ink brand. Okay. Like, even if you ever noticed, none of them cast members really work for me. I got real people working for me, you feel? So, it was never no, oh, we just doing it because of the show. I got real, real people working, and they got real clients. So, Right. That didn't yeah. slow up nothing because the way I do it is <clears throat> I don't bring people in to work into these shops. I basically hire people that's in those cities. Okay. So it's not it's not gonna affect the business because honestly, everybody in those shops, in those areas where those shops is know who I am. I've been to them. Right. Like Houston, all them shit. Like I've been around so people know who I am. And then honestly they all say and say Yo, listen, you made a mistake. We good. And I'm cool with that shit. That's why I'm not really sweating that because on the internet, they can say whatever they want. Mm -hmm. When reality, as long as my people love me, mm -hmm. I can still go back home. I'm good. Tory Lane said something like that on the, the Breakfast Club. He was like how, like, people will be canceled online, but, like, when you go out into the real world, like, love you. everybody love you. Yeah, and you like, where are these niggas? Yeah, where are you niggas? I'm waiting for someone. Yo, you fucking dog abuser. Like, nah. Right. Like, most of the time, yo, man, forget that shit, see? And be like, it is what it is. Keep you know it pushing. I mean? Keep it pushing. So, just to wrap up the BH1 Black and Crew conversation, mm -hmm. um, what are some highlights that you had from when you were on the show? Like, what were your, some of your best moments, most memorable moments? Ooh. I don't, I had a lot of good moments on Black Ink. I had a, a lot of great moments. The most, the best moments I think was, was when I opened up my first franchise shop, Atlanta. I feel like that was like one, of the, because that was the moment that I knew like, I could really do this shit. Like, yeah. you know, TV would make you assume, assume that, you know what I mean? Like, you can't be successful outside of TV. And then when I moved into Atlanta, which Atlanta is not a tattoo town, if anybody I knows. I didn't know that. Nah, it's not a tattoo town. And that shit boom like that, I felt almost like a satisfying feeling. Because right. so many people doubted me, especially in my camp. Mm -hmm. And that's what, and then to see people reactions to like a black man opening up shops, it was like, it, it, it was almost like an adrenaline rush. And that's what kept me going and going yeah. and going because I wanted to get people that, I wanted to inspire people to okay. understand like most of the time they tell you the only time you can gain financial wealth is playing sports or music. As a black man, definitely. And I'm showing them, basically I'm doing this shit with some tattooing. I ain't the smartest man in the world. There's way smarter black men than me. Y'all can do it too. I love that. So, who were three of your favorite celebrity clients? Like, what were three of your favorite celebrity tattoos that you did? Damn. I'm going to have to say. Wow, you really going to put me on the spot. <laughs> um, I have, well, no, I only have a guess of who you're going to say. One of them. No, I don't know the other Of two. all time, it's DMX. I knew that was it's that no, one. No, DMX. Yeah. But Rich Homie Kwan, he comes in a strong Really? Seat. Yo, listen. He did a whole performance in the shop. <laughs> it was six people in there getting tattooed, a bunch of women, I think, from um, Arkansas. And he went to the one in Atlanta? Yeah, in Atlanta. Okay. And he put on a whole show. He was in there doing a Kwan? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, but he just loves performing it like that. That shit was funny. And then 
Let me That's think. so interesting. Designer was cool too. Okay. He brought in the pandas. Shout out to Sty again. <laughs> Here you go. And <laughs> well, you said three, right? Yeah. Okay, cause I was gonna keep going. Cause I, I mean, had some interesting situations. Like, yeah. Okay, so what's the what's the most interesting celebrity tattoo story you have? Hmm. Money bag, yo. Money bag is crazy, yo. Is he? Yeah, nah, not like crazy like that. He's just a cool dude, but you know what I mean? You know when you get with him, mm -hmm. you with him with the whole day. Okay. So what happened was, went to his tour bus to tattoo him, mm -hmm. to my man Gems. He had one of his baby moms at the time, and we supposed to tattoo, so we sitting there just doing the design and all that. She's like, oh shit, I got a show. Yo, you want to go? Oh shit, I got a show. All right, man, let's go, <laughs> yo. So we go. <laughs> Go to his show. He tears it down. I forgot where it was. It was in New York. Then I had to go back to his bus and tattoo him. And I did like several tattoos. I did the joint on his face, through the um the knife. I did his hand. Really? I did yeah, I did a couple tattoos on him. So what he went to he did the show with the, the rap on? Hmm? He did the show with the rap on? Nah, I did it afterwards. You know, oh, I, I thought you started I, and then nah, you had to stop. I okay, was got with it. Him. No lie. Oh, that's me. I'm sorry. I apologize. I thought I turned everything off. I'm gonna have to curse this person out. Oh, <laughs> told him fucking call me. My bad. All right. Nah, he did it after. See, I was with him from twelve in the afternoon to like six in the morning. Oof. Yeah, but it was fun. I got to live like a rapper for a day. How was I, that? I ain't gonna do that. No, I ain't with it. Rapper lifestyle not for you? No, nah, not for me. I Why not? I, I can't keep up. I gotta go to sleep. <laughs> nap nap time after a while, baby. Nap time? Nap they don't nap. take naps? I think they take naps. No. No, they don't. I feel like they sleepy naps. No. That's the problem probably. No, they probably, but no. Mm. Not when I was with him. He was up up. Mm. He made like three songs, did a video. He, yeah, yeah. Well Money Bag Yo was successful in this music shit. So mm -hmm. I definitely understand why. So, what advice would you give to um, young black men that may be in the streets um, that, you know, have a bigger vision like you did, but aside from, like, the whole keep working harder thing? Because I feel like everybody tell them that. Yeah, it's your bullshit. It ain't about keeping it. I say whatever you strive you want to do, you first got to learn financial liter literature. You mm -hmm. got to learn about shit like that because... At the end of the day, no matter what your dream is, you gotta have a fun. You gotta have funding for it. Yeah. And if you don't know what to do, you fucked. Like yeah. I had to really, I really had to learn that, like later on down the line, as I have businesses. Like I'm taking my own money to fund these shops, mm -hmm. when I could have just got somebody to fund all these shops and kept my own damn money. Like it's That's just true. so much shit that you learn, and so much money that I wasted to learn this. And if I was younger. Mm -hmm. Like if I was twenty and knew all this shit, God, I'd be a billionaire by now. So you learned from trial and error, not right. I had to learn okay. from trial and error, and then learn it from other people. Okay. Like accountants tell me, yo, why you do this? Why you didn't do that? Right. You could have got a break on this. You could have had a break on that. And it's just like, yo, why you ain't do your credit? Why you don't got business credit? Mm. You got so much money going through the bank, and you don't have no business credit. It's like simple shit like that. It's like, um. No. And then stupid shit like thinking cash is king when we live in, in, in a, a digital society, yeah. a digital financial society where yeah. credit is king. So it's like you got to learn certain shit. They definitely systematically keep that out of black people's hands. So they always do. Black people, go educate yourselves. Financial literacy, very important. Um, so I'm not sure if you ever heard him say this, but Lil Baby says that the reason that he doesn't have any tattoos is because he felt like he knew that one day he would have, you know, the right amount of money to be in the right rooms with the right people. And he didn't want them to look at, to him, look at him. Right. So um, with tattoos just now becoming acceptable, mm -hmm. like in the workplace, like in a corporate workplace, mm -hmm. um, do you feel like your tattoos may keep you out of any rooms with anybody? Like, do you feel like they affect your business at all? See, the difference is, right, when babies say something like that is babies from the South. 
where mm-hmm. it's basically Christian based. They they shun they shun it among stuff like that. You feel me? Okay. In New York, people don't be caring about tattoos. They don't care about tattoos on your face as long as it doesn't say "fuck the world" mm-hmm. and some crazy shit like that. Nah, but I just feel like. After a while, as you get older and you want to get into those rooms, mm-hmm. it is going to be more difficult. Do you feel like it's been more difficult for you personally or have nah, you, because, you haven't experienced that? No, nah, because people know my 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 track record. My track record speaks for itself. I could walk in with a Hana mask and say Booga Booga. They still going to come fuck with me because they know my track record is. Booga Booga. Yeah, Booga Booga. Okay. No. I guess your track record is very strong if you could walk in a room and say booga booga. Yeah, it is because I be knowing what I be talking about when I come down to business. Other shit I don't know, but business, my mom and my pops, they taught me very well. Okay, period. So do you have anything outside of just owning the shops? Like, are you into any other business oh, ventures yeah. that you would like to share? I got a trucking business. I got a whole bunch of real right. estate out there. Okay. And shit. <laughs> I got a couple other um, business ventures I can't um, talk about right now. Yeah, I could tell by that laugh. It was a little devious. Yeah, it was. <laughs> so, um, do you have, what do you suggest that black men get into as far as businesses go? That right there, as black men, I don't feel like, see, I'm kind of different because. I always listen to other, like, successful people, and it don't mm-hmm. matter black or white. Right. I just feel like you should always get into something that you love because you won't feel like it's um, it's a job yeah. or a career. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is something that you love doing, so you won't, sp- won't pay attention to the hours no more. So it's like I could tell someone, oh, you're getting into production, get into this, but if you don't have the love for it, you're not going to be successful in it. So if you love sewing fucking scarves, yeah. So the best scarves you can get, and sell that get, shit, and sell them shit, get some shit in Louis, do something. But at the end of the day, do the best that what you you love doing. Hundred percent. So we're gonna play a little game. Oh shit. Okay. We're not gonna talk about none of my exes, right? Yeah, it's X I, versus X. You gotta pick one. What the fuck? I knew it. I knew it. Was gonna, I knew. It. I knew it was gonna be something like that, man. How did I know that? You want to play? You gonna pick? I'll pick. Oh, shit. I'm not even a lot of game. Not that spicy, but I like your energy. Okay, good. <laughs> so, we're going to do this or that tattoo edition. So, I'm going to say two people, and you're going to tell me which one of those people you feel like has the better tattoos. Okay. Okay? So, first one is Drake versus NBA Youngboy. Oh, that's easy, Drake. Why Drake? Drake, the quality of his tattoos are way better than the NBA Youngboy. Okay. And plus, he light skinned it, so you could do wild other <laughs> shit. You could do wild they like other the shit. same complexion. Nah, nah. Um, all right. Yeah, Maybe you, I'm blind. Yeah, blind is bad. You're a little color blind. All right. <laughs> yeah, they definitely not the same complexion, but it's okay. Okay. Next one is Cardi versus Lotto. Cardi. Cardi got that. You see, you see yeah, that, that tattoo that's tough. at the end. You just thigh. It comes from the thigh to her, to her wow. shoulder. That's yeah. a different type of pain. And one sitting, nah, she different. Yeah, she bodied that. Yeah, she. Okay, next one. Gucci Mane versus Chris Brown. Whew. Hmm. Well, well, well. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to go with Chris Brown on this one because I don't know. Okay, so you know Gucci used to have the ice cream cone face tat, and now Chris Brown got the sneaker face tat. So which face tat win? Gucci. Okay. He was listen. He put a cone with burr on it. You can't <laughs> lose, yo. There's no way to lose. You was the first motherfucker to do that shit too. When yeah. motherfuckers like yo, he's crazy. He's crazy. And look how many people went and got their face tattoos now. So, nah, burr. <laughs> nah, burr. <laughs> Hashtag nah, burr. Okay, next one. Lil Wayne versus Birdman. <laughs> and we can't see his head, but do not forget about the star on that man's head. Nah. The no, star no. on his head is important. No, listen. <laughs> I'm going to go with Wheezy. Okay. But they got the same tattoo artist, so it's kind of like the same. Mm. But hey. That actually makes mad sense. 
I do with Weezy because, yeah. Okay, the last one. Lil Durk's India tattoo versus Chris Sean's blue face tattoo. Yo, Chris Sean wins all day. I re- Yo, listen, man. Listen. <laughs> that shit is on his ankle. She right. put it on her throat. On her throat like that. That right on her throat. She a warrior. She, she, she's a yeah. different type of warrior. And she just got another one on the side profile on the side of her. Mm. Like, no. She's different. She wins. She wins all day. She's, she's crazy woman of the century, yo. He can't go nowhere. Mm. You would like your girl to be crazy like that? Listen. Crazy like that, and he ain't leave, that mean that shit good. The crazier you are, the better it is, yo. And honestly, Math. every every nigga like a little toxic joint, yo. Okay. Like, you go through my phone, punch me in my face, and still be with me. I love you, baby. Hey. No, let me tell y'all what the key was. It was to still be with me. Let me tell you why I was the key. <laughs> because if I find anything in a nigga phone that I got to punch him in the face for, he's done. Nah, what you going? You can't leave him. He's the only person that's not going to press charges on you. So what are you doing? You ain't going nowhere. I bet I won't. Okay, you ain't never in a toxic relationship. You tripping. You're damn right. You see? He going to have you doing shit like that. His whole face going to be in your throat. I don't even got a tattoo. See, I'd be damned if I get one of a man. See, and I don't think she had any tattoos before that, neither. Mm, that's T. Hey. V. V. All she right. Knows. So how do you feel about the whole name on the body thing, the face on the body? Somebody just got my face on them two days ago. What? Okay, well, further down on this card, I have Are You Single? And it was further down, but I'm going to ask now. Wait, that does just because somebody got their face on me doesn't mean I'm with them. I had never been with this woman before. She just liked me. Oh, it's a fan. Yeah. Oh. Wow. <sighs> All right. Yeah, <you> know, <laughs> Ooh. But you know what's so funny now? I think about I've never, any woman I've ever dealt with, I've never let them, no one got my name. Nobody. Would you like that? I don't think so. Mm. Girls ask me for, I don't, no. Nah. Would you get a woman's name? What? Okay. Eyebrows up. I got my daughter's name on me if that counts. But I love that. But no. Okay. Face? What? Eyebrows even N- upper? N- no. Okay. I got my mother face. That's it. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ask, ask some more. So when people come to you and they tell you like, I'm trying to get my husband's name right here, Daryl. Mm-hmm. Do you put your input in? No. You just give them what they want? Yeah. Because it's like this, right? I'm not going to be the one to sit here and get a no lover's quarrel. Like, <laughs> you, I'm always going to be the bad guy. I tried this before. I was like, yo, don't do it. And I sat them both down like, please don't do this. <laughs> and this is me taking money out of my pocket. I'm sitting there, don't do this. I'm like, why? Because it's like a jinx. Like, mm. once you get this motherfucking name tattooed on you, Something's gonna happen, and mm-hmm. something had to happen for you to come here and get this <laughs> tattoo right now. I mean, maybe they just love each other that much. No, if you get the backstory, you get them separated. You already know your season fucked up, bro. She called me out there. I just gotta get make it real. Men slow. are so embarrassing. Yo, so embarrassing. <laughs> but then the women come right behind. Yeah, piece of shit. I had to make it get my fuck. Don't make it small, see, because you know what I mean. I might have to cover this piece of shit name. Up. It's, it'd be both, and I'd be sitting there like. I just told y'all this shit. <laughs> Neither when one don't want to get together, give it, right. hey, Maybe I love you it's forever. And then I do, and then I be doing bullshit sometimes, make them shit big, just so they got problems covering it up. Yeah, I, I used to do that bullshit. Listen, she used to piss me off. When I tell you not to do something, you don't listen to me, you do it. Mm, you feel it. Your Gemini is showing. Put it away. My bad. So do you give your input at all on any type of tattoo? Like, if somebody brings you a drawing or something and they like, hey. Yeah, if it looks stupid, I'm not going to put my name behind this shit. Okay. And, and I'm not going to do a face tattoo on somebody who I feel that like is young and is, don't have a career or something like that. That's, That's very like, noble. Yeah, I'm not going to do shit like that because they still, still your Caesar did this and me. Caesar should have knew better. And they right. Like, I don't do shit like that. If I wouldn't do it on family, my mom might go do it to you. Oh, huh. that's a really good mentality. Not money hungry. We love that. I'm not, I'm not greedy. Period. Um, on Instagram, you yeah. posted that your whole face is over. Uh-huh. You stand by that? My what? Your whole face. Yeah, I shit over with. Okay. I, I feel like that's what get me in trouble. Like, 
I'm cool with the business shit. But it be the women, man. I be having problems, man. I'm just leaving it alone. I'm not a good character. I'm not a good judge of character. Mm. So I can admit that. And once you commit your problems, you're halfway there. And that's my problem. The other half is fixing it. Yeah. And that's what I'm doing. That's why that whole face shit is over. I'm good. Okay. It sounds crazy. Like, some people don't believe me. I'm really, like, I'm chilling. So what have you learned from your past relationships that you feel like you would definitely rectify moving forward? Did you just hear me? I just said, I learned <laughs> that I'm a bad judge of character. Okay, but see, that puts it off on the other person. That's not real accountability. It's accountability so. to know that you're picking them, but you're not identifying what you're doing wrong. Oh, what I'm doing wrong? I just said I'm picking them. Okay. No. What? Um. Because, see, to say that would mean that every relationship failed because of them. No, it'd be me too. So then what the hell you be doing? What did you learn? I just told you I'm bad at picking them. <laughs> it'd be me too. Like, all right, right? Let's break it down, right? Please. I work too much. Okay. I work way too much. Okay. I can admit that to any, with any relationship. My goal, that's why my goal is not in line with most of their goal. Okay. Like, after a while, like, not even a while, women, their goal is always that marriage shit. Me, I can't get married until I'm wealthy. I don't see the point of it. If we can't have a big ass wedding do us, what the fuck we getting married for? Mm -hmm. We can stay like that for a while. Let me go chase the bag. Some people don't have the patience for that shit. And I really don't have the patience to make you sit here and understand where I'm going. Like, every single one of my exes, I told them where I'm going. And every time they leave, I get to that point and be like, damn, I didn't think you was going to do that. Yeah, because you, you wasn't willing to wait. And mm -hmm. I'm not the type of person to chase anymore. So I could admit, like, some of the times, I could have sat there and played the Romeo shit, bring the boom box out, baby, please take me back. But that's just saying me. The only thing I'm chasing is money. So you don't feel like you could have maybe handled the women differently? Like how handle them how? Because I never, I don't know. I just feel like there's always room for improvement. No, there is always room for improvement. Like, but with me now, I always leave it like, yo, listen, this shit ain't working out. I'm never the one to say you're not gonna catch me cheating. You're not gonna catch nah, yo, listen, this shit ain't working out. You feel me? Like yeah. that's it. We can't. It'd be like, why, why? It'd be a build-up and shit, but I'm not even, even talking about it's not going to bring rectify the situation. I'm not feeling this shit no more. Most of the time, people can't understand that shit or respect it. So you're like a all the way in, all the way out type of guy? Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm, when I'm all the way in, I'm all the way in. When I'm out, I'm out. And I'm not going to sit here and dangle you around and be like, yo, mm -hmm. listen, I love you, baby. Then I got three other girls that yeah. I'm seeing behind you now. Because that's just, I feel like when my mom's always telling me, you lie to somebody, you scared of them. I ain't scared of nobody, so I'm going to just tell you the truth. Sometimes even it does hurt your feelings. Okay, so your skincare routine. What's you made that routine? or did it come from a woman? Do you have one? Let's start there. You I said don't. One. You don't have a skincare routine? Nah. My that's mother, actually very interesting to me. My mother used to ask me that shit. Nah. I don't have a skin. I don't like. What, scrub my face and shit like that? Use. Well, okay. So I knew a bald guy, and he used to exfoliate everything, and he used to always keep it together. Nah. And that's what you give me. You give me the keep it together all the way around. I never vibes. had that problem. Like, hmm. even growing up, I never had acne. Wow. I never went through that stage of pimples, nothing. Men don't get shit. Nah. All y'all got is gas. Yeah, that's about it. That's it's it. crazy. No, I never went through none of that shit. I that definitely is. thought you was going to tell me you got your skincare routine from a woman. Mm -mm. I drink a lot of water, though. I drink a lot of water, but nah. I be forgetting to clean my face sometimes. Wow. I know. It sounds crazy, right? Some men live the life. I swear. Shit is nuts. <laughs> so, I see you got a Halloween party coming up. Mm -hmm. What you going to be following? See, I don't know. I'm still up in the air because... My first costume, mm -hmm. people like, nah, you bugging. What's the options if you want to share? Uh, you might want to pop out. I don't know. Nah, it's either I'll be the Pope, Bane. I wanted to be do the Joker, but I don't think a black Joker would be nice. And then there was another <laughs> one. But nah, it's, it, 
If you the Pope, you gonna wear the thing on your head? Yeah, I got that. I got the whole thing. <laughs> I even got, I even, I even got, I even got the cross with the staff so I could walk around. Oh with. shit! Yeah, but you know. Why you got that on hand? Did you buy it or did you decide? Like, did you buy it for costume purposes and decide, eh? Or you just got that in your closet? Um, I want to plead the fifth on that because <laughs> I just feel like you just cornered me and uh, you just asked me one question and led to another question <laughs> that had nothing to do with it. You didn't sit in and say, do you have a sex dungeon with weird-ass costumes in it? No, you asked me one before Halloween. That was just it. Okay. So do you have a sex dungeon with a bunch of closets? I plead the fifth again because I don't even understand why we're talking about my closet. Well, you brought up the sex dungeon, no, not me. No, because I'm talking about my costumes. Right, but who the hell just got a Pope costume on hand? Me. And I got to get to the bottom of why. I like dressing up as different things sometimes on okay. different occasions. Sounds like blasphemy to me, but we can move on if you want. Yeah, that's why everyone keeps saying, but hey, you got your fetish and I got mine. We're going to leave that one right where it's at. So what does life look like for you after Black Ink? And I mean, like, the stores, not, you know. Like, what do you? what's your end goal? Where do you want to end? I mean, I'm still franchising Black Inks. You know okay. I mean? Now that, you know, I'm not on the Black Ink Crew show. Mm-hmm. It gives me more reach to do a lot more things because I got a lot more time on my hand. So right. now I'm franchising because I still want Black Ink in 50 states. But instead of me owning every single one, now I'm giving people options to buy in. Oh, wow. That's fire. Yeah. Buy- and then I also still have my own production company, which I'm putting together some shows right now because mm. I'm not going to be out of TV for very long. Okay. But I don't want to be in front of the camera. You want to be behind the scenes? Yeah, I want to do behind the scenes and shit like that. So what type of shows are you venturing into? Or that's TBA? No, 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 no. I'm doing everything. I'm doing everything from cartoons to reality TV to even scripted shows. That's fire. That's dope. So it's like, there's a whole bunch of people done road books, Mm -hmm. street street books. I'm reading them now, putting together scripts. And I'm basically going to be making these movies and selling them. So like the Amazon, the That's Google, lit. all the other shit. Because everybody got some type of stories and shit like that. And I just feel like producing some of these shows, I get to the place I really want to get and just sitting on Black Ink Crew. Like, I really want to get to a Tyler Perry status. Really? Yeah. So I do you feel like TV is one of your passions at this point? Yeah, because, you know, being on TV for 10 years, it basically taught me the whole game. Mm-hmm. Like, it taught me, like, where the real money's at, where you don't have to sit here and, and fucking work every day, yeah. learning that content and certain things is gold instead of just be like, oh, this is just for tea, this is just for Instagram. Like, certain things is just, like, you learn the value of certain things and how much quicker you can get it. Right. And with me, it was like, I seen my production company when they first got Black Ink go from like an office of this size to like three floors. Oh shit. And on 42nd Street where that Red mm. Lobster's at mm. in Times Square. And I mean three big floors. And the CEO, he went from probably a millionaire, he's probably had like one million in less than 10 years. In eight years, went to a value of 200 million. Sheesh. And that's just him. We're not talking about his company. Mm. So that shows you how much money is in production. So with me now, it's like this. Most people, as black people, want to sit there. We in sports. While the owner gets most of the money. We we in um, music. With some big exec gets most of the money. Yeah. This is the only time that this is kind of a fair game for is production. Because now there's outlets now and platforms that you could get that advertising money that all these big networks live off and survive off, you can now get a percentage of that. That's so good. it's different because none of us on Black Gang ever got no cut of any of the damn commercial money. Because mm-hmm. Lord knows if we did, I'd be on some bullshit right now. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned the execs. What music are you listening to right now? I'm still on my damn south shit. It's crazy. You're not listening to New Yorkers? I do, but I just feel like they following down south motherfuckers right now. Like, you feel like the drill scene follows the down south? 
I feel like the drill scene is 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 kind of was refreshing when Pop Smoke was off, mm -hmm. but it was like it just got too watered down. You know, mm. there's a new drill rapper every week, and, and he's dying the next week. It's like I can't really get behind it, and maybe because of my age too. But I really, I, I really, I don't know. Like the last real good pop, real is Pop Smoke and Fabio. But other than that, it's like. Who who you who you think is nice? Um, I really like B Love. B Love is good, but I'm waiting for his next hit. I really like Kenzo B a whole lot. I think Kenzo B is all right, but I'm still waiting for to to have um. How can you say? It? See, with, with with that type of, it's no, it's one way. It's no like, no variant. Like I want to hear another flow. Really, yeah, I it's think it's no versatility in it. Like a Jay Z. He'll okay. sit there and rap fast, then rap slow, okay. then start singing. 50 yeah. hooks, this, that. Like, there's no verses. Like, I grew up on New York rapping, so when I hear shit now, I was like, where is this coming from? Like, mm -hmm. Jada Kiss, like, Mace, these motherfuckers <clears throat> was hook killers. Like, their hooks, no one ever made hooks like them. Mm -hmm. And then the lyrics that go behind, and now you hear... Da, 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 shoot up your crib. Uh, uh, shop your mother. Like what? Uh, all right, that's what's up. Is that your impersonation of drum music? Yo, that's how that should be sounding, you. Yeah. And it needs to be then. Da, 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 da. Like word. Is that how you dance to drum music? No, nah, I don't dance to that shit, yo. I ain't you dance? That. No, no me you don't be dance. in the clubs dancing. Hell no. You hold up a wall? No, I sit there and just chill. Mm, hate that for you. Why? Because you're supposed to be in a club having fun. Niggas, niggas don't do that in New York. And I hate that for them as well. This is what you're talking about. Like, the only time that you really can have fun is, like, another state. That shit is not popular. I feel like you got to be, somebody got to break the habit. So the same way you said with the, the black men and the reception, somebody got to be the one to be vulnerable. Somebody got to be the one to get up in a club and dance. Personally, I dug you in a club and nobody not going to tell me nothing. You a female. Niggas don't care. I've yo. danced battled, uh, I've dug you battled a man in the club. I bet you have. And he lost, right? Of course. A caveman. Because he, he's going against a, a period. Of, listen, y'all dancing. <laughs> Is y'all been double dutching and trained to move y'all feet in certain ways men can't, yo. So at the end of the day, I'm not battling no woman, no dancing. You, I you feel like we don't gotta battle. Whoa. You're a cheater for that, yo. You knew you could beat him. I just feel like you knew no. the odds was with you and you like fuck him with smoke him right in front of everybody. Nah. For one, I don't initiate battles. That's number one. Mm. Are you seeing like an number two? But okay. Ooh. Put that Gemini away. What? I'm, I'm not know How you got that from me? Look at you. Look at your demeanor now. It's like, I said that and that just clicked. Like, no, I'm Because I'm not an instigator. It. Okay, if you say you're not. And no, I'm not tired of people saying it because people don't say that to me. People don't say it. Like, if people say you're a cracker, you're a cracker. If you're an instigator, you're an instigator. <laughs> but you ain't hear that from me, yo. Start dancing in the club. Tell the people where to find you. Tell the people, <laughs> tell the people what your Instagram is, what your plans are. Sees the black gang and... My plans is to take over the world. We love that. All mm -hmm. right. Caesar here. Gemini Aquarius energy was alive. We out. <laughs>